Hello community, today we'll be making the ultimate comparison, a triple threat match between Hitman 2016, Hitman 2 and Hitman 3. Now a lot of people have already done this video with effects and graphics, but we are going much further. We will be judging these games in 5 categories, gameplay, graphics, story, longevity and bang for buck. We'll be using the classic MotoGP scale to give them a rating 25 points for first place, 20 points for second and 16th for third. There's 125 points to go out in total, so let's see how many each game can score. Starting out with general gameplay of the first game of the trilogy, Hitman 2016. Going back from Hitman 3 to Hitman 2016, I didn't expect the difference to be that big. I mean, it had been a long time since I had played Hitman 2016, but I was astonished at just how different the gameplay was. For starters, all 47's movements felt slow and clunky. It felt like playing in slow motion. Getting up a pipe and scaling would take forever, and even jumping a fence felt like I was on the moon. Every time I used instinct, it would slow everything down, and it was impossible to use instinct and aim at the same time, making hitting objectives like the virus that much more difficult. On top of that, cameras were completely different. You could get caught on camera in a trespassing area for as long as you like, and you wouldn't lose Sound Assassin as long as you delete the evidence later. However, you wouldn't see the camera's vision area on the ground, meaning that avoiding it was just down to pure luck if you weren't able to shoot at it. But as I said earlier, everything just felt so slow. Even shooting the pistol felt incredibly slow. Coin distractions were very difficult, since you couldn't quite see the question mark on people's head until you used instinct, and it felt kind of unwieldy. The actual spotting circle that builds up around you in Hitman 2 and 3 here just tends to get wider, so it can be very difficult to know when to hide or keep going when trying to do any type of lures. You have to trust your hearing more than anything, since the sound cue is what usually helps you, the pitch gets louder the closer you are to being spotted. Not to mention that the game has no briefcase available, meaning that transporting snipers or assault rifles is entirely up to your agency pickup location. And on top of everything else, I found the game to be extremely inconsistent. Even in the short time that I spent revisiting it, I got caught multiple times from behind closed doors and walls. Though that also happens in Hitman 3, here it tends to be a lot more common. When dealing with a target and a bodyguard, even when using a non-lethal weapon, which should be silenced, you will still get caught from a ridiculous distance away. It's almost impossible to take down a bodyguard without alerting the target. And if the target gets alerted, half of the map gets alerted immediately as well. Not to mention that the doors can be particularly problematic. Not only do you tend to get a bit stuck when opening them, but you can't really close them that fast either, leading to situations when you can't close the door immediately after opening it, which can get you spotted easily. Lock picking is particularly slow, as well as there is only one animation for it, no matter if you're crouched or not, and it takes quite a bit. Going back from Hitman 3, I genuinely felt like I was playing an early beta, not a finished product that has been out for years. If I had to describe Hitman 2016 in comparison to Hitman 3, my exact words would be slow, clunky and inconsistent. It was incredible at the time, but the gameplay simply does not stack up anymore. However, moving on to Hitman 2, it was a big change from Hitman 2016. For starters, the overall movement felt so much more smooth and easy. I was able to interact with objects and doors much quicker, which automatically made my runs faster. The camera grid was now shown clearly, so I didn't need to guess anymore. Plus, I was able to use my instinct alongside aiming, which made it extra easier. Instinct no longer slowed everything down, instead taking place in real time, which allowed me to be quicker. The annoying white radius had now been replaced with a yellow suspicion bar, which allowed me to set up lures and move through restricted areas much easier, since it allowed me to be more aware of my surroundings. Also, with a briefcase now available, it made Sniper Assassin a lot more doable and enjoyable. Targets could no longer hear me take down their bodyguard from behind with a non-lethal melee, like they could back in 2016. However, one thing that had not improved was the scaling and climbing. It was just as slow as back in 2016. A good change they made is altering the sliding key to a different one, so now you don't have problems scaling instead of sliding anymore. Overall, scaling wasn't much better in Hitman 2, though leaping over fences was definitely quicker. 
Coin distractions weren't great either, they felt just as clunky as back in 2016. However, ignoring those two things, I felt almost as if I was playing Hitman 3. It was very similar indeed. With 2016, I was struggling quite a bit as everything was different, and mostly for the worse. However, here, the difference was a lot more minimal. Hitman 2 really was a huge step forward in comparison to 2016. The overall gameplay was improved significantly. It was much faster and smoother. I was able to play with NPCs and run my usual routes with very few differences. Lockpicking had also improved, as now there are two animations for it, crouched and standing up, and they are both quicker than the version of 2016. Overall, I would say Hitman 2 was a giant step forward, so you would only have to think how different would it be when I went back to Hitman 3. In Hitman 3, the changes were small, but definitely noticeable. Scaling has improved massively. You are now able to climb up pipes and move along edges much faster. It makes the scaling process far more efficient than ever before. A good reason for that may be due to Hitman 3 maps requiring quite a bit of scaling. Overall, the change is massive and it makes the gameplay more fast-paced. Another grand change is the coin distraction. Now you immediately know who is distracted by the question mark over their head. It's instant, which gives you more confidence when executing distractions. There are some small changes as well. The color of the camera grid has now changed from turquoise to green. The suspicion meter has also changed slightly, from light yellow to a slightly orange color. Not a huge change, necessarily. Most of the new things are in the actual Hitman 3 maps themselves, like the addition of the shortcuts, which now allow you to replay levels much faster and give you easy ways to get the key points on the map. Another change is the addition of the camera. However, unlike the shortcuts, it can be a bit controversial. Ultimately, its addition is a mixed bag for most players. I personally don't mind it at all. It's a new gadget that can be interesting, as we see in Freelancer, it's very well put to use. However, one thing that I don't like, and I feel is a step backwards from Hitman 2, is that now, instead of pressing a single button to hide a body, you have to hold it down. It makes hiding bodies more time-taking and clunky. I was never a huge fan of the holding down button thing anyways. I can understand for poisoning glasses or exiting, but for hiding bodies, I just don't see any advantage. It's more of a disadvantage in my opinion. Still, I would argue Hitman 3 has the best gameplay of the bunch. The holding down thing may be annoying, but the scaling and distraction update is fantastic. So having to rate it, I will give the 25 points to Hitman 3 for perfecting the core gameplay with a small exception. Then I would give 20 points to Hitman 2 for huge improvements it added, and 16 points for Hitman 2016, which is good. It shows that I was made the right progress. Could you imagine if 2016 was to have better gameplay than Hitman 3? That would be insane. Of course, as anything, IO has improved the gameplay, and the results have to show just that. Now that we're done with gameplay, it's time to move on to the graphics, and it can be rather controversial. Depending on which map you're looking at, results will vary. Also, obviously, Hitman 3's graphics and textures will look much clearer, but a lot of times the lighting and effects are far superior in 2016. If you look at almost any 2016 map, you will immediately notice how much better it looked in 2016 in comparison to Hitman 2 and 3. Sapienza and Marrakesh being the most obvious of the bunch. The lighting is just perfect and truly showcases how beautiful they are. The effects of Hitman 2016 and Destructible Environment were far more impressive during the Square Enix days because of the extra cash. In Hitman 3 effects, are often either missing or way worse. It's an overwhelming downgrade of quality. With IO becoming independent, they had to cut costs. Clearly, that's the route they went. Now, there are outliers, of course. Bangkok looks far better in Hitman 2 and 3 than it did back in Hitman 2016. In 2016, it looked like a giant yellow filter had been stuck on it. It really didn't look that great. Now, however, it does look better. Plus, in Hitman 3, Ayo has tinkered with reflections and lighting more, so it does beat out Hitman 2. However, the huge lack of quality in the effects and detail compartment, with combination of the fact that most of the 2016 maps still don't look quite as good in Hitman 3 as they did in 2016, makes Hitman 2016 the obvious winner, and earns it the 25 points. Hitman 3 gets a good second place for 20 points, because although lacking some good details, 
It does deliver improved lighting and reflections. And Hitman 2 ends up in last place with 16 points. In comparison, the lighting and vegetation is much worse, often making beautiful maps like Sapienza and Marrakesh look dull and unimpressive in comparison to their 2016 variation. Now, of course, with graphics, it all depends on what you're looking at. There is no clear winner like there was with gameplay. It's more about trying to piece things together and come up with an overall outcome. Moving on to the story, we have to begin with Hitman 2016. Now, the story of Hitman 2016 is very difficult to follow. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, all things considered. You're constantly hearing about stories and people you've never met and from organizations you know nothing about. The cutscenes are very random and have very little if any substance to them. However, they are beautifully animated. It's almost impossible not to immerse yourself in it just for the gorgeous scenes and excellent voice acting. They may not make much sense on their own, but they are an eye candy to watch. On the other hand, Hitman 2 is the exact opposite. Plenty of substance, but piss poor cutscenes. Honestly, I know that Square Enix pulled out and left IU in limbo, but there had to be a better way to do it. The slow moving images make the game look extremely low budget and cheap. It's very difficult to immerse yourself in it since it looks so strange. The only thing I can compare it to is the Mortal Kombat and Injustice Tower endings, but that's just for the endings of the characters. The games themselves had actual cutscenes. I truly feel they would have been way better off using the 3D characters like they did in Hitman 3, because the story is quite decent, unlike Hitman 2016. There's a lot of things going on, you do get some really cool stories and details, but it's wasted by the horrible presentation. Hitman 3, on the other hand, is a mixture of both. A decent story with a decent presentation, using the 3D characters themselves, doesn't make for the most beautiful of cutscenes and story, but it is decent maybe slightly better than Hitman 2. Having to rate them, I still have to give the 25 points to Hitman 2 for having a great story even with a low budget presentation. 20 points for Hitman 3 for having an okay story with a decent presentation in the forms of the 3D character cutscenes and then Hitman 2016 gets third with 16 points because even though the cutscenes were gorgeous, the actual story itself has zero substance in it. Longevity is up next. Don't be fooled by the always online feature. Hitman is a mostly single player game with ghost mode being the only online content we've ever gotten. And it's gone now too. What I mean by that is in order for people to stick around, we need content to be supplied to us often enough to give us something to look forward to for both playing and unlocking. Now looking back at Hitman 2016, the very first episode dropped on March 11th, 2016 with the ICA facility and Paris, and the very last episode arrived on the 31st of October 2016 with Hokkaido. However, they would keep supporting the game with elusive targets, featured contracts and bonus missions until the 12th of October 2018. This is when the very last elusive target, the pharmacist, was released. And that's the last content Hitman 2016 ever got. Between March 11th, 2016 and the 12th of October 2018, the game got a total of 32 months. Hitman 2, on the other hand, would launch on the 13th of November 2018, and the game would be supported with new patches and content all the way until June 11th, 2020, where the very last elusive target, The Undying Returns, would come back for one final time. Hitman 2's support would last a total of 20 months. From there, we go on to Hitman 3, which would launch on the 20th of January 2021 and has been supported more or less till now and we already have scheduled content until the end of May. So in total, up to now, Hitman 3 has been supported for 29 months and counting. However, I do believe the support will continue at least until the end of the year or close to it, so we will beat Hitman 2016. For that reason, I'm gonna give Hitman 3 the 25 points, then 20 points for Hitman 2016 and 16 points for Hitman 2. Of course, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we can overtake Hitman 2016. We're close enough to it anyways. And finally, the very last thing we're looking at, bank for buck, aka how much content we got per each game. Looking at Hitman 2016, we got a total of six maps, not counting the ICA facility, as that was available for everyone. And when it comes to bonuses and DLCs, we have Patient Zero, a combination of four missions taking place in Sapienza, Bangkok, Colorado as a sniper-only mission, and Hokkaido. We also got Holiday Hoarders, which was a Paris-exclusive mission, the Icon and Landslide, 
both for Sapienza and house built on sand for Marrakesh. In total, we have 8 maps and 8 bonus missions as a total package. Next up we got Hitman 2 with a total of 6 maps in the base game and 2 more added as a paid DLC. We also have 2 packs of 2 special assignments, so 4 in total, which were bonus missions, as well as 3 sniper maps and Hitman Ghost Mode, an original idea that was very unique at the time, but is sadly no longer available. We may have gotten 4 less missions than Hitman 2016, but the 2 bonus maps, 3 sniper maps and Ghost Mode when it was still available are a far better deal, giving you far more original content. Hitman 2's deal was definitely better than Hitman 2016 when it comes to the overall content, however, here comes Hitman 3. We have 6 maps as well in the base game, though Romania isn't a regular map, though to be fair, neither was Hogs Bay. However, we also get one bonus map, Ambrose Island, which came completely free. On top of that, we have the Darkmoor Garden Show and Berlin Egg Hunt, which are escalations similar to bonus missions. The 7 Deadly Sins, which are 7 escalations, and the Deluxe Escalations, which are 6. However, above everything else, we also got Freelancer, a huge free update which completely changed and altered the way we play Hitman. Overall, I just have to put Hitman 3 above Hitman 2 and give it the 25 points, because although the content may not have been as good all of the time, we got a lot of great stuff completely for free, we got one less map, but Freelancer compensates for that. In second place with 20 points, we got Hitman 2. It gave us a lot of great and original content, but sadly some of it hasn't aged that well, like the sniper maps which aren't as popular and the removal of ghost mode. Then in last place with 16 points we have Hitman 2016, with only side missions as DLC. Overall you can argue which content is best, but for me Hitman 3 definitely gave us the best maps overall consistently. Hitman 2016 and Hitman 2 also had good maps, but there was also quite a bit of shitty ones as well. The time has come for a final score, and when we add all of the numbers together, Hitman 2016 scores 93 points out of 125. Hitman 2 scores 97 out of 125 points, and finally, Hitman 3 scores a whopping 115 out of 125 points. Well, congratulations to Hitman 3 for winning the race. I hope you enjoyed the video, it definitely wasn't easy to make, so if you did, please do like and subscribe, it does help me out a lot. If you have any other games or trilogies you think I need to cover, you can let me know in the comments below. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.